Hallelujah. He's also here with his, one of his friends. Amen. Pastor Ayeni. Let's celebrate Pastor Ayeni. Come on, let's come on. Hallelujah. Come on, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. You're all looking good. Now, before you do have your seats, uh, there are two reasons we come to church. Number one reason is to worship the Lord. Uh, the Bible says how pleasant and how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good tidings. The Bible says we went to the house of the Lord together in company. And so it's always nice when uh, we come we worship the Lord. Uh, Hebrews says not forsaking the assembly of the saints together. Um, second reason why we come to church is to have fellowship with one another. Uh, 27 verse number 17 Proverbs. Iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. It says in verse number 19, as in water face answer to face, so does the heart of a man to a man. Amen. Amen. Sometimes um, beyond the sermon and beyond the worship, you just asking somebody how the person's week is or went or how the person is doing and just complimenting how the person looks could just be everything the person needs for the week. Amen. So you want to just get out of your seat now. I want you to go around and just welcome some 20 people. Um, say something beautiful to them. Get out of your seat. <laughs> come on, come on, go around, ask someone, hug somebody. My comfort, my shelter, my 
Let every breath. Let every breath. All night I am. All night I am. Never cease to worship you. Never, Never cease to worship. Lift up your two hands and just shut your eyes and forget your neighbor. There's just one person in this audience with you this morning. His name is Jesus, Son of the Living God. Just magnify him with the foot of your lips. Say something good to him. Pray in the spirit, just pray in the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost intercede on your behalf. You can't handle what is coming. Only the Lord has authority over what is coming. Just pray in the spirit for a moment. Pray in the spirit for a minute. 
we thank you and Jesus he said whatever you ask the father in my name he shall give it to you for one reason that the father may be glorified in the son dear father we come not seeking anything but seeking your praise and your glory Lord our life affects your reputation the outcome of our life affects who you are we didn't save ourselves you saved us you brought the bible says you translated us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of your dear son and father lord the proof you have that you are a good god a forgiven god a merciful god to those that don't believe in you yet is we that are already saved lord they look at our lives and they question who is this your god but father the bible says you, I and the children the Lord has given unto me we are not for reproach or shame we are for signs and wonders you said in Isaiah 43 21 Lord you said these people have I formed for myself their life will show forth my praise and I do ask God Almighty under the ordinance of your spirit this morning that every life under this conference every life that will attend this conference from today to the very end of it whose life does not yet stand in true representation of your goodness God Almighty they will come under open heavens in the name of Jesus we suspend every activity that is not of God father the three agents sent to make sure the people of god are empty and father i put them in chains they are bound in jesus mighty name Amen. your name be praised forever Amen. thank you for this house thank you for your son thank you for your daughter thank you for the leadership the followership and the workership father we pray in the name of jesus lord you don't allow me to go to a place until it is time for increase i do carry the grace of increase into this place and father lord will establish the banner of christ jesus and father lord god almighty the status quo changes there comes elevation in every area and ramification of life there comes elevation in the name of jesus to you alone my king i give all the honor and praise no one shares your praise oh god thank you lord uh, in jesus mighty name we pray and well i got to say loud amen. amen come on slap your neighbor a high five and tell him this is your week of glory this is your week of glory this is your week of glory hallelujah you may be seated in his holy presence come on someone say this is my week of glory such a pleasure to be with you and thank god for your senior pastors I would love as much as possible for us to minimize movements in the process of ministration. I'm a very sensitive person. The, 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 the Holy Ghost, you need to understand that uh, the Father, to walk with the Father, you need obedience. Huh? To walk with Jesus, you need love. That's to walk with the Son, you need love. To walk with the Holy Spirit, you need reverence. Okay? Yeah. You need what? Reverence. Reverence. He is he's very sensitive. Alright? Now, if you want the Holy Spirit to just visit you where you are, please be sensitive. Let it never be about you or anybody or anything. Let it be about, about him. Alright? 
Otherwise, we come to church. See, God is not a tool. God is not a tool. He's a person. He's our father. He decides who wakes up and who doesn't wake up. The Bible says in Psalm 75, it says in verse number 6, promotion is not, does not come from the east or the west or the north, or the south rather. He says, God brings up some and he puts some down. He decides to do what he wants to do. No one questions him. Psalm 135, verse number 6. The Bible says God sits in the heavens and he dwells whatsoever he pleases. Nobody can question him. Anything he does, no one can ask him why you do what you are doing. God is not in a realm that our understanding can grasp. All right, so please, when you come to God's house, as much as there's liberty in the spirit, sometimes be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. All right, and let it be about Him. We are in His presence, not in our, not in our presence. We are in where? In His presence. And the Bible says, in His presence, there's fullness of joy, expression of joy. Amen. So, if the Word of God comes to you, ladies and gentlemen, forget your neighbor. I said, let there be just one person in the audience, in your audience this morning, and that's. Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It's just you and the Holy Ghost in the house. Amen. Thank God for this conference, my dear friend, awesome man of God. If I give this microphone to this man, your roof will go off. <laughs> and I say your roof will go off. An, an awesome trainer of men, huge, wonderful disciple. Praise the Lord. He just decided to come and fellowship with, with us this morning. Can we hear me appreciate Pastor Ianni again? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, I'll come back to that. Praise the Lord. I was going to greet the pastors. Please, I beg you my phone, your phone. Huh? If it is iPhone, what's the latest iPhone? Eight. If it is iPhone eight, I will seize it. I need one. Ten. See, that shows you how, how contemporary I am. Amen. I bring you greetings from my wife of uh, 25 years. And my friend of 27 years. She is the director of finances, kitchen affairs, general well being of the Olawali family. <laughs> our job is to make her happy for our own good. <laughs> she sends her regards, and I can I bet you she has prayed for you this morning. Amen. Amen. Her name is Bola Olawali. Genesis 28, we're talking about open heavens. Brother, you'll be praying now. We'll pray. I know you're a praying church, but we're taking prayer to another level. Amen. We will pray. So I'll tell you, poke your neighbor and say, we will pray. And the God, our Lord, will answer us. Amen. Amen. Quickly, Genesis and chapter number 28. Please always come to church with uh, your Bible, whether electronic or hard uh, copy or print. It makes no difference. For those of you that have electronic, your Bible dies with your battery. All right? So, <laughs> you know, it's true. When your battery goes off, you don't have a Bible. Uh, the word became flesh. It's not viral. It's not battery, rather. <laughs> okay? That's just a joke. Any Bible is a Bible. It makes no difference. All right? So, please always have a note and a notebook and a pen to write. You will likely lose 90% of what I'm going to say. You only remember 10. It's been proven. All right? But the ones you can write, you can go back home and check your Bible again. Genesis and chapter number 28. We'll read very briefly from verse number 10. And I will stop at verse number 19. Genesis, we're talking about open heavens. Someone say open heavens. Come on, say like you have a voice, open heavens. In the name of Jesus, whatever is left to be done for your joy to enter into the realm of fullness, you will receive this week in Jesus' name. Where I come from, whenever we pray, we say Lord, a loud amen. amen. I say everything outstanding in your life that you have been hoping for, trusting God for. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Without whoever a tree for there it shall remain. Every cloud of promise that is still pregnant over you, that has not let down their rain. This week will not finish without the rain in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So I'll read verse number 10 and you read verse number 11. That's Genesis 28. We continue that alternate order and end at verse number 19. Okay? Don't bother reading your version so that we can read one, one of the screens gone up. Okay, this is the King James Version of Scripture. That's fine. Okay, so we'll read together. 
so that we read from the same version of scripture. All right? Praise the Lord. The, the Bible says, and Jacob, no, no, I'll read verse 10. You read verse 11. Okay? I'll read 12. You read 13. In an alternate order. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, please, make sure you are reading out loud. Don't murmur scriptures. Though that mama died in the wilderness, you live in Jesus' name. Amen. And Jacob went out from Bathsheba and went towards Haran. No, no, ho hold on, hold on. Let, let us read from the screen. I said we are reading King James Version. All right? So uh, lift up your head, not to the hills, but to the screen from where our reading comes from. Want to read? Please, engineer, can you get my head off the screen and let just have the scriptures only? Is it possible? Just so that because it's, it's too tiny for some to see. Is that okay? Get, get, just take me out. We're not here to sing, we're here to read the Bible. God bless you. So we're reading verse number what now? Now, I'm, I'm the one that will read, so let, let him get, let help him, praise the Lord. Don't worry, we're getting into the thick of things very soon. The word of God will do you good this morning. Ah, uh, your amen is, uh, amen, 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 amen. Can you do that? Okay, don't worry. No, let, so that we don't waste too much time. Let's, let's read, let's, let's, let's go back. If you can't do it, just go back to where we are. Verse number 12, I'll read. Okay, verse 12. Bros. All right, then verse 12 says, no, 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 no. Is this the beginning of verse 12? This is not the beginning. Uh -huh. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Us. If your Bible version is King James, just read from your Bible. All right, we're struggling with this. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Angina, that's another assignment for you. Please, by tomorrow, scriptures matters more to me than the screen itself. All right. So, um, verse number fourteen. The Bible says, "Also to your descendants shall I shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, um, and." In you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 15. Please, can you read verse 15 to yourself? I need you to read it with the eyes of faith. Wherever you see, you put, put me. Want to read. Behold, God is with me. And will keep me wherever I go. And will bring me into my land of promise. For he will not leave me until he has done what he has spoken concerning me. Verse number 16. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Verse 17. Someone say gate of heaven. Verse 18. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on it. Verse 19, the last verse, everyone read. And he called the name of the place Bethel, but name of... 
What was the name of the city at the beginning? Luz or Lord, whichever one. L U Z. Um, now, what's the new name of the place? Bethel. Bethel. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy words. I need you to go again quickly. Go to um, Matthew and chapter number three, second reading. Could you put a finger or put your hand in um, the first reading in Genesis 28, please? Very, very important. We're going back to it. Praise the Lord. Keyboard, you could just play something in the minor, just very, very low. Praise the Lord. Chapter 3 and verse number 16. Matthew 3, 16. Can we read together in a loud voice? One, two, read. When he had been baptized, Jesus, and behold, the heavens unto him. Please, before we start hitting the highway, was it Jesus that opened the heavens? No, no. Look at your scriptures when you're answering. Was it he that opened the heavens or the heavens was opened unto him? So he didn't open it from here. I need you to understand this. Please, let's read that passage one more time. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened. Now, in other words, the key to open the place did not come from here. If, it was, if he was the one that opened it, gee, the Bible would have said something different. This suggests that it was someone else that opened the heaven unto him. He was not the one that opened his heavens. Stay with me. Now, go back to Genesis and chapter 26, 28, our text. This morning, I'm talking about open heavens, put I think today's subtopic is the gate of heaven. Someone said the gate of heaven. I can't hear you, church, the gate of heaven. This is word prayer ministries. Let me hear you loud. The gate of heaven. Now, you know the story very well. The Bible talks about a man called Jacob. Jacob was a supplanter. In fact, this journey, he had just left home. He, he cheated his brother by prophetic ordinance. He cheated his brother of the brother's inheritance. Because the truth is this. If what matters to you is what you will eat and what you will drink is likely you will lose your divine destiny to people that God matters more than their care. I take that again. If, too loud, too loud. If what matters to you is your own personal care and well-being much more than the things that has to do with the word of God, it is likely you will lose your spiritual inheritance to someone else who cares more about God than themselves. The two of them are children of the same father. If anybody should be the, the firstborn is Esau. The firstborn received the inheritance. He's the one that takes over all the possession of the father. But the Bible says because this man cared more about not just his belly. His belly is a representation of his personal care. Jesus said, said don't care. Matthew 12 said do not give a thought, Matthew 6 rather, do not give a thought about what you will eat, what you will drink and what you will wear. If these three things matter more to you than your relationship with God, it is likely that your spiritual inheritance will be inherited by somebody else. So I need you to understand. So when you are talking about hope and heavens, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the realm of prayer, I was brought up in the school of understanding. When you know a thing, huh? you will get the job. When you have understanding, you will be the boss. I say it again. If you have knowledge, you will get the job. If you have understanding, you will be the boss. There's a difference between understanding and knowledge. Africans, we have knowledge. We can read book and pass every exam. But very few people, for you to be able to invent a thing, you need understanding, not knowledge. That's why we'll, we'll have a lot of PhDs that can't invent anything. 
because we have knowledge but there is no understanding understanding is key ladies and gentlemen Bible says my people perish not because they don't fast and pray my people perish because they lack knowledge understanding is the one that matters a lot 24 verse 3 Proverbs the Bible says it says acquire knowledge knowledge is good it says by knowledge a house is built through understanding it is established by wisdom a house is built through knowledge it is established through understanding all the chambers thereof are filled with precious things what is the joy of building a house when it has no content wisdom will build the house knowledge will establish it but understanding is what makes it worth a living so proverbs 23 verse 23 the bible says buy the truth and sell it not and so buy wisdom buy knowledge and with all your gettings get understanding buy understanding also if you understand the operations of god you understand i've heard people pray and say lord in the name of jesus lord i render my heavens open you have no authority to do so you can't you can't and we we'll feel like we're praying we'll get no results but when you have understanding ladies and gentlemen you are skilled in what is applicable and what is not applicable they came to jesus brought the disciples of jesus a, a demoniac to a, a young man that had demons to the disciples of jesus though they have casted out demons before this one they couldn't cast out mark chapter 9. the bible says and jesus came down from the mountain the man ran to Jesus and said, sir, help me. And Jesus spoke to the demon and the demon left immediately. The disciples went, nice question. Lord, how come we were not able to cast out the demon? And Jesus said, this time. In other words, there are, it, you ought to understand that it is not the same type. There are different types. But if you don't understand the type and you just have knowledge of what they are, Ladies and gentlemen, you struggle on the same spot. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if there should be a resolution you should have this year, is the fact that I must sit down. I will eat God's word so much. When the devil comes to squeeze me, rather than yell, yeah, yeah, ah, my mother, it will be, it is written. And you see, God, God does not expect you to know exactly which book or which chapter. Like I'm saying now, no, no, it's not necessary. When the devil came to Jesus and said, turn this stone to bread, he didn't say it is written in the book of Deuteronomy. No, no, no. He just said it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. You don't need chapter or verse. Just know what the Bible says. Just know what? What the Bible says. Sorts out the matter. Because the truth is this. The word of God is actually not chapters or verses chapter of verses to help our understanding and our reading is just one continuous word so when you are talking about open heavens David and Yemen, please listen and by the time you pray when you are effective and you have understanding by the time you do 30 minutes of prayer you will achieve more than 3 hours of a lack of understanding stay with me church bible says this young man ran away from the father's house the mother actually told him i said jacob it's time you get out of here esau is gonna kill you so run to my brother's house so while he was on his way the bible says suddenly he got to a place where there was no i mean it was almost um, getting to six o'clock the sun was setting in other words he, he, he had to stay there there was no hotel got to a certain place now for you to understand that that certain place is not a place where you had houses he was alone so the bible says but when he saw there was something that made him stop at this particular place i will bring it to your attention later he got to the place and the scripture says he alighted in a certain place there was something in that place that must have made him stop there and now what made him stop there is because there were some set of stones those stones were put together in a different way from other stones he's been passing by. Those stones were erected in a peculiar way. In our fact, well, if I'm going to need a pillow, I can use one of these stones that have been put in, beautifully put together and lay my head and sleep. And that was what he did. 
scripture says he got to the place now please could you beam on the screen verse number 11 verse number 11 please quickly wrong with me 28 our text stay with me my brother oh wonderful oh please put your hands together for him good job good job Genesis 28 11 God will give you inspiration you will invent something that will give that will make you leave money for your children's children the Bible says and he lighted on the place do you have new King James version if you do so no, it lighted on the place is a cake English okay some of you might think the opposite of light is dark <laughs> So you don't say you darkened the funny the place, no? <laughs> you don't have. Okay, no problem. Let's read it. The Bible says, and he lighted on the place, which means he got to a place. All right? And tarried there all night because the sun was set. Now, keep reading. And he took of the stones of that place. Now, let me read my new King James Version to you. He says, so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of the place now for you to be able to use you can't use a pebble as a pillow stay with me I'm going somewhere there were a set of stones he took one of the stones stones were sizable enough for him to use as a pillow now don't forget the location here the name of the place before was called Luz, L-U-Z. All right? And when he highlighted, he highlighted between Bethel and Luz. Eventually, when he got there and when he finished, because of the meaning of the name Bethel, he now named the place Bethel, house of God. Go with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis and chapter number 12. Let me show you what stone he picked. Because it's Genesis 12. Quickly. Genesis 12. We're going to read verse number 6, 7, and 8. Genesis 12, 6, 7, and 8. I'll read very quickly. The Bible says, And Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem. Keep reading. Unto the plain of Moray, and the Canaanites were was then in the land. Keep going. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham. Is that Genesis 12? Okay. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto the, unto, and said, unto your seed I will give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Now, someone say altar. altar. Those days when you want to build an altar, okay, if you go to Joshua and chapter number 5, you see how altars have been built. After they entered into, after they crossed Jordan, Joshua told the children of Israel, each one of you from each tribe, go and pick a stone, a big stone, put them together. So there were 12 stones heaped. And the Bible says those stones were there till today. Well, till then, that time. Now, there became an altar as a memorial that the Lord opened up the Jordan and we crossed to the other side. Are you still with me, church? Now, so here they are. God appeared unto Abraham and said, Abraham, the land you're standing, yes, I will, this land I'm showing you, I will give to you and to your descendants. And your descendants will be very great. Now, as at the time God is speaking, he had no child. God is the only person, you go to him, you are squatting somewhere, you don't have a home. And you're saying, Lord, please, what are you going to do about my plight? And God will be showing you about an estate that you're going to own. You are asking for one house to be showing you an estate. You are now saying, Lord, you know what? Um, let's forget the estate. Give At least let me get out of this, my friend's house. Have one apartment I can leave. God will now show you blocks of apartment. And you'll be talking because, ladies and gentlemen, God, God, you need to understand, God is not in today. Huh? God is the only one that is in yesterday because he doesn't live in time. Time has past, present, and future. God does not live in time. So he doesn't have a past and a present and a future. That's why it's the same yesterday. He's the same. 
Yesterday is the same because he has no yesterday. He has no today. So as we speak, ladies and gentlemen, please focus. As we speak, God is already at the end of the year. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? God is already in December. So when he says, don't worry, be not afraid. He simply says, I already know what will happen in February, March. April, May, and June. Just obey me. You, the Bible says, mark the upright. Behold the just man. The end of that man is peace. He already, he already sees you in 31st of December. He knows where you're going to be, what you will have. He has already made a plan for you. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of you, to give you an expected. Why is it expected? Okay, so here is God saying, well, you don't have a child now. Huh? See, count the staff. <laughs> your, you, if you can't number them, your children cannot be numbered. He said, only one. Just give me one, first of all. Huh? Just give me one. God doesn't speak in one. He doesn't speak in today. He, he, he called the things that be not as though they are. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have news for somebody. Things are not where they ought to be. God is not going to tell you the next immediate thing that will happen. He will show you the end of the scenario and tell you, if only you obey me. Walk along with me in holiness and in purity. Shout me diligent with all your heart. There is an expected ending for you. God now said, after God appeared to him and said to your children, I'll give this land. The Bible says, he now erected what? An altar. What do they use for altars? Stones. Put big stones together and there an altar. Stay with me, church. That's not the only altar. Go to the next verse. Stay with me. Next verse. Now, in verse number seven, Abraham erected an altar. Now, that altar is what you call an altar of sacrifice. In other words, those are the kind of altars where you put animals, kill animals, and burn them unto the Lord. Thank you, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the altar of sacrifice. God showed up. He, he, will, he will just erect an altar. Oh, the Lord showed up to me here. Okay, but the Bible did not say he communed with God there. Go to the next verse. Next verse says in verse number 8, he says, and he removed from the place where he put the first altar onto a mountain to the east of where? Bethel. And pitched his tent. Now, it was not really, really Bethel. I told you the original name of that place was not Bethel. It was lost, but it was not far away from Bethel. What Jacob simply did was extend Bethel to that place because Bethel means the house of God. Stay with me, church. And pitched his tent, having Bethel to the west. And hey, hey. On the east, and there he built. Now, two altars in two verses, but they don't serve the same purpose. The first one was not in Bethel. That was an altar of sacrifice. This second altar was somewhere around Bethel put up stones again. Are you still with me, church? And this one was not for the killing of animals. This one was not for sacrifices. The Bible says, and there he called upon the name of the Lord. This is an altar of communion. Fellowship. Let me explain myself. You might not understand. Abraham was confused. God was showing up to him in different ways. At some point, you will hear a voice from heaven. At some point, some, some three men will come and visit him. At some point, God was showing up in different ways. He now said, God, if I go to the valley, you are there. I go to the, today I see you as a man. Tomorrow you show up as an angel. Lord, you know what? I don't even know where you are. I don't even know you. Let it suffice. Let me build up this altar. At least, I know that any time I come here, I'll be able, you will meet with me here. That became an altar of communion. Actually, that was the first house of God. God had seven houses. First house of God is the altar of Abraham. Second house of... Let me not go there. That's another sum of another day. 
You can come tomorrow. Maybe we'll hit on that a little bit. But that became the first house of God. So anytime, go to chapter 13. Let me prove my point. Go to chapter 13. Stay with me. Stay with me, church. Don't worry. It's going to get exciting soon. It's already exciting. Chapter 13. The Bible says from verse 3, 3 and 4, very quickly. Chapter 13, 3 and 4. And he went on his journey, talking about Abraham. From the south even to where? To where? On to the place where his tent had been at the beginning. Between Bethel and... Now, the first altar was not built between Bethel and I. It was the second altar that was built between Bethel and I. That's the altar of communion, of relationship with God. Now, keep going. Onto the place of all of the altar which he had made there at the first. Keep going. And there, Abraham. Anytime Abraham wanted to get God's attention, he leaves his house, travels away from anywhere he is, gets to this same first point where he built the altar. He knew that if he gets there and he talks to God, God must answer. Because it was not the one that begged God to show up there. God himself was the one that decided, Abraham, I will visit you here. So he now said, you know what? Since God is a bit confusing to me, let me make an altar here. Anytime I come there, I know I can talk to God. Then I became an altar of relationship. Are you still with me, church? Communion. I'm going somewhere. An altar of communion. So anytime, just see, it was in the same thing God replicated in the in the ark. Twenty five of Exodus, the Bible says that should be verse twenty two. God told them, He said, "You make upon it a mercy seat. That any time they come to the mercy seat and cry to me, I will come in with them there." So that now became the second house of God. God now decided, well, since you need a place to always meet with me, no problem. Um, after this altar, then God now said, since you are going to be on a journey. Eh? you might not be able to go to this exact location again I will be on the mercy seat on the ark anywhere you carry the ark to you know you are carrying me the ark now became God's house and now say anytime you come to the mercy seat you talk to me yeah I will come in with you and God was living on the ark for a long time until David built a tabernacle that was the third house of God fourth house of God is the is the temple of Solomon. Fifth house of, let me not go there. All right? About another time we talk about that. But listen, ladies and gentlemen. So now that became a place of communion. Now, Jacob did not know this. Jacob was just traveling. But you see, don't forget, there was a house of God on his journey. He got there for some reason. Someone say for some reason. See, there are some, see, some of you will not... Let me explain. For some of you, there will be clear divine direction. For some of you, there will be what? Clear divine direction. Leave this place, go to that place. God sometimes will lead you, go and speak to that person. But for others, God will just order your steps. You will not know why you are going to where you are going. You will not know why you want to go and talk. You will just stumble on it. For some, there will be direction. For some, it will be divine stumbling. You will just get there and decide to stop. Why you stop, you don't know. Why you can't move again, you don't know. It's because there's something else that will be calling upon your life that is actually your access to heaven. Stay with me, church. We'll pray soon. Then, this was the same place Jacob got to when he ran away from home. And when he got there, suddenly, he felt like staying in this place because there were stones. Apparently, he didn't understand what the stones were for. The same altar between I and Bethel, that was the place of communion, he took one of the stones. And with that stone of communion, he laid down and he had a dream. He had a dream. In the dream, ladies and gentlemen, suddenly he saw a ladder. Go back to chapter 28. He saw what? A ladder. There's a song, there's this, I can't remember her name. I want you both sister, sang a song. 
Ladder, ladder, ladder. My Lord Jesus is a ladder. Brother, follow the ladder. Sister, follow the ladder to heaven. I'm not going with no ladder. <laughs> Very interesting song. When we want to make fun in our house, we just sing it. Ladder, ladder, ladder. My Lord Jesus is a ladder. <laughs> Why I follow the ladder? <laughs> Or shall I follow the Lord out to heaven? No. <laughs> you climb any ladder now, you fall. <laughs> now, you saw a ladder. Go back to that text. Open your Bible. I need to see it. We're bringing it home now. Twenty-eight. Verse 12, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and his top reached the heaven, reached to heaven. And there the angels of God, what was the first thing that the angels were doing? What does it mean to ascend? Go up. Key, very key to your open heavens. Very key. Now, when you have a ladder, you can either be descending, which is coming down the ladder, or ascending the level which is climbing up the ladder. What was the first direction of the angels? They were going up first of all. Now, don't forget this ladder touches from the earth to heaven, which is the throne room of God. Okay? The angels were not coming from heaven to the earth. The angels were not coming from heaven to the earth. Ascend means they are moving from earth climbing to heaven and when they get to heaven, they return. They were not coming from heaven first. They were moving from here to heaven and whatever it is, they have to come back from heaven back here. Their primary assignment is here, not there. As we sit down here, there are angels here. Whether you like, whether you see them or not. The Bible says, hey, the angels of God are compassed around those that fear him. I know I fear God. If you don't fear God, at least I know there's angel here because I am here. Because I fear God. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to have that consciousness. He has given his angels charge over you. Right? Lest you hit your feet against a stone. In other words, they are also around you to make sure that no evil comes near you. But you see, an angel can be around you and the devil will be slapping you and they can do nothing. So God, why did this happen to me? My people perish. For lack of understanding. Let me not jump. Let me go step by step. Then we pray. You will see how your life will change. So, my sister, do you understand what I've been saying? Very, very, you understand a whole lot. Huh? Because in the next seven months, you understand how suddenly you become the reason why the church is gathering for celebration. Amen. Marriage bells ringing birth coming. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, listen people. When God decides it is time, then it is time. You are ascending. Then the guy now said, because you can't make two altars in the same place. Go back to your text. Let's bury our head in the Bible. He said, I am the Lord God of you. And behold, the Lord, verse 13, stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, and the God, of Abraham your father, and God of Isaac, the land. Someone said the land. Of which you lie, I will give to you and to your descendants. One. Two. He was repeating the same thing he said to Abraham in covenant. What is God saying here? God saying here, 
the only access you have to heaven must be based on covenant not effort not right when God made a covenant with Abraham he said in chapter 15 said in chapter 17 this land I will give to you and I will make your children like the stars of heaven so when he says I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac he says I'm the God of covenant I've made a covenant with your father Abraham that this land will be yours so he pointed to the land first then he talked about the people which was also the Jews the children of covenant now God now told them and said God was speaking to John, um, Jacob here he said I am the God that made covenant with your father let me explain what covenant does from here so that you understand that God was introducing himself not as the God your helper he's not saying Lord, I'm the Lord your helper he's not saying I'm the Lord your healer he's not saying I'm the Lord that blesses you I'm not El Shaddai no 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 the manifestation here is the manifestation of he as the God of what covenant the one that made a covenant with your father Abraham I reiterated it to Isaac what was the covenant covenant to give you a land covenant to make you a people keep reading bury your head in your Bible maybe you should get a microphone be reading for me sit down don't worry sit down Yes, please. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And your seed will be like the dust of the earth. Yes, go ahead. And thou shalt spread abroad to the east, to the west, yeah. and to the east, and to the north. Someone here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wherever you are, almost all through the night I had to pray. Because I was seeing walls. And those walls, as I was praying, they were falling. They were, they were just falling. Whichever area you have been confined, every area you have been experiencing stagnation in your life, expect that the hand of God, the hand of mercy, will fall those walls in the name of Jesus. Yes. And to the west. And, and to the west. And to the north and to the south. Every area, yes. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Keep reading. And behold, mm. I am with thee and will keep thee in all places look whereupon at, thou goest. Look at covenant. Did this guy ask God to be with him? No. What is he saying? I made a covenant with your father. By virtue of you being the son of that man, everything I said to him, I said to you. Because when God was making a covenant with Abraham, he told Abraham, and this my covenant is between me and your seed after thee. Covenants are transgenerational. You don't have to be a willing party to be subject to it. Covenants are what? Transgenerational. You don't have to be a willing or a present party to be subject to it. When God, you know, man lost relationship with God at the beginning. When God wanted a relationship with man, God, for God to have relationship with man again after Adam fell, God needed covenant. For the devil to have relationship with man, in any way, he needs covenant is the link between the spirit realm and the physical. Haven't you read in Genesis chapter 3? The Bible says when God was speaking, I will put enmity between you and the serpent. Between your seed and his seed. Satan is not a human being. He can't give back to children. What does his seed mean? The woman will have seed, isn't it? She is human. Humans give birth. Where would the seed of spirits come from? Satan is a spirit. He can't have babies. He can't. The only human being that came from the loins of God is Adam. And the second Adam, Jesus. That's why it's called the first Adam and the second Adam. They are the ones that came directly from the loins of God. Alright? And for Adam, the first Adam to have expression, God, after he made him, because he's a spirit, God now had to make him a house and put him in the house. So you are a spirit, you live in the body, you possess a soul. Alright? Now, when, after Adam fell, 
man and God got separated. So since then, God had to use another one that came from his loins. Who is the father of Jesus? Talk to me, church. Who is the father of Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and the angel said to him, after Mary said, how shall these things be when he said you have a child and no man will touch you? He said, the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. The power of the Most High will come upon you. That which shall be born of you shall be called holy. Stay with me, church, please. Understand this. If you don't do this, I'll be laboring in the next three days. I hate laboring. It's good to work, not to labor. He has delivered us from labor. Now listen, people. The only way from them that God will have children, either through Jesus, huh, is through covenant. That's why Jesus said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Nobody can be born a child of God again. Only those two were ever born children of God. No human being. No human being can be born a child of God apart from the first Adam and the second Adam. In fact, first Adam, if you go to Luke chapter 3, the last verse, the son of Seth, the son of so-so and so, the son of Adam, Adam, the son of God. You see that. Now, the only other person which we call the son of God, in the beginning was the word John 1, the word was God, the word was God, the same was the beginning of God, all things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made in him was life, the life was the light of men, the light shines in darkness. Darkness comprehended over it, not verse 14, and the word became flesh, dwelt amongst us. We beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 21. And a virgin shall be with child. He shall bring forth a son. Verse 23. He shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Okay? So he's now the son of God. Now, those are the only two persons that came directly from the loins of God. Any other person that will ever be a child of God has to be a child of God by covenant. No other way. So you cannot be born a Christian. You cannot be born a Christian. How do you become a child of God? Let me explain myself. Who is the father of Jesus again? The Holy Spirit. God bless you. Because no man touched Mary, right? It was, if you check Jesus' DNA, what do you find there? The DNA of the Holy Ghost. Why is he called the son of Joseph? How did he become, thank you, ma? How do you become a custodian? Through adoption. How do you become a Christian? Through adoption. We have not received this. <laughs> because it's, when you say Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, which tribe is Jesus from? Which tribe is Jesus from? tribe of Judah. For you to be from the tribe of Judah, your father must be from Judah. Where is his father from? Who is his father again? Which tribe is the Holy Ghost from? No tribe. So why is he called the lion of the tribe of Judah? Why? Why? Because Joseph is from but is Joseph his father? Thank you. So how did Jesus become someone from the tribe of Judah by adoption. God is setting a model that everybody that will become a Christian will become a Christian by adoption. You can never be born a Christian. Christianity is not a religion. It's a revelation of God's love to men, period. need a second birth to be a Christian. Finally, brethren, covenant is your access to open heavens. We read the place in Matthew. Jesus, after baptism, suddenly his heaven opened and God spoke. Let me explain why you cannot open heaven. 
none of us can open heaven. Your prayers cannot open heavens. Because the heaven does not belong to you. And they, you have the key to your house up there. Because the house belongs. Can you come open my house? If you do, it's called you come you come a burglar. Listen, people. Listen. Psalm 115, verse 16, my brother. We're finished here. I'm going to stand to pray. We read this together. Psalms 115. Dear. Psalm 115 verse 16. Psalm 115 verse Thank you. Please everyone, can we read together? Want to read? The heaven, even the heavens. Now, please. Are you, how many of you here, you are the Lord? Can I see your hand? You are the Lord? Okay. But you are of the children of men. Can I see your hand? You're a human being. That's what it means. Very good. Where, which, this scripture says, which place belong to us? The earth. Who owned the heavens? Simple, man. You're in charge of what happens here. Not God. Uh-uh, not God. God is not in charge of what happens here. Uh-uh. God is not in control. Until you put him in control. Because here, you're in charge. But who is in charge of heaven? So who can open heaven? No, not the Lord's. Who can open heaven? The Lord, only the Lord, because the heavens belong, it doesn't belong to you. That's why Jesus could not open it from here. It had to take the owner. The Bible says the heavens was now opened unto him. God has now said, the only way I will open the heavens from scripture is through covenant. Ma, did Joseph ask to have, have that dream? The dream he had. Did he ask to have it? No. Who gave him the dream? Now, when he had the dream, he saw that were there demons in the atmosphere? Eh? Were there ancestral spirits he saw in his dream? Were there demons blocking his, the way? No. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what you call open heavens, sir. There are three realms of heaven. The one we see, the sky, which is the habitation of spiritual wickedness in high places. All right? Then you have the firmament, which is space. It's endless. Nobody knows the end of it. All right? Then you have the third heavens. How do I know it? Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Paul was speaking. I once knew a man, whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I cannot tell. The man was taken to the third heavens. That's how I know there are three. All right? And he saw things to the glory of God he couldn't explain. He, he couldn't articulate himself. What am I saying? If you are saved, the only key that unlocks, the only reason why God opens the heavens over anyone is because of covenant. I'm going to show you two other reasons tomorrow. But number one today, covenant. Let me explain. How many of you pursued Jesus? Jesus, you must save me. You must save my soul. So that we can celebrate you differently. Because he came after me. I even frustrated him. Several times he will come. I will hear him. I will say, no, not yet. I still want to enjoy. Kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. He didn't go after you. The covenant you have with God, you didn't make it. In fact, no human being can make a covenant with God. I've heard a lot of folks that have a covenant with God. You can't. 
we have an agreement. We made a vow. You read scripture. The Bible says, Psalms 89, verse 34. God says, My covenant will I not break. Go and read all the covenants, seven major covenants in scripture. God will say, This is my covenant with you. One of the reasons why you are not in a position to make covenant with God is because covenants have conditions. You cannot give God conditions. You cannot get out of covenant. The only way out of covenant is to connect to a superior covenant. The only way to get yourself free from any covenant is to do what? Who up to a, a, a higher, a superior covenant? Now, how do you know how superior or inferior a covenant is? Three things. Number one, what is, on which blood does it stand? Every covenant is by blood. On which blood does it stand? Number two, who is the initiator of the covenant? Number three, what is the duration of the covenant? God's covenant is established on the blood of God. The blood of Jesus, superior, nothing else. The best you will get from the devil is the blood of a baby or the blood of a virgin. And which is still human being. But God himself had to now come and shed his own blood. There is no blood superior to that of Jesus. No blood. No blood. Please, don't exaggerate the devil. You make him look too good. Most of what we think of him are his lies. Only the Holy Ghost can give you the revelation of who he is. He's not as serious as we think he is. He lives in time like one, you and I. He has 24 hours in the day. God does not live in time. Let me tell you, do you know if the devil doesn't worship God in a day, he will cease to exist. That's why God says, you know what? Spend time with, in communion. By the time you are at the altar of communion, heavens will open. Oh, heavens will open. Heavens will tear loose. lot of reasons why and don't forget the key of heaven is not with you it's not with you because the heavens does not belong to us however he now said because of the covenant he has made us sit with him where in heavenly places in heavenly places how do we get to heavenly places by covenant of Christ If you learn to dwell in heavenly places, you're already in open heavens. You don't need to cry for it. Communion is the key to open heavens. Some of us want divine solution and you are living anyhow. It doesn't work. No, I'll be deceiving you if I told you the other one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Those, like the lifestyle that you know does not conform to heavenly places, cannot bring you open heavens. Shall we stand to pray? I just laid the foundation. At least while I was ministering, now the Lord told me about three or three people here. I mean, I know you, one, apart from her, two other people. But I don't have time to. Today's own is to lay a foundation. Brethren, this is the key. The Bible says, in the presence of God. In the where? any place you are communing with God, there is fullness of joy. That altar that you took his stone from, the Bible says he did not know that the place of communion was the house of God. He said this place is a terrible place. He was so afraid. He said this is no other place than the house of God. He now called the place the gate of heaven. Even though you don't have the key, yet God has put gates here you stand in front of the gate, you will access heaven. The key is not with us. The key is with him. 
but there is a gate. No gates. There is a gate that God had put on earth. If you get to that gate, you will access heaven. At that realm, wickedness is suspended. Have you noticed, man of God, that God was not sitting down in that vision? He says, I saw the top of the ladder. What happened? And the Lord was standing. Anytime God stands from scripture now, arise, oh Lord, let your anytime you see God standing, his enemies have scattered already. That's why there was no demon in that vision. God was standing. And for you to have God to stand, you need to get to the gate of heaven. What's that gate? Covenant in Christ Jesus. When, when Peter had his focus on that covenant, natural law was suspended. He was walking on water. We are living too much in natural life. Some of us, we have put effort ahead of grace. If all you are getting in life is what you are working for, your life is void of grace. Grace must add to you what you are not qualified for. Please put your hands together for Jesus. Just is a good place to speak. So, I am so burdened with this. I don't know what else. I don't know how to address it. A lot of us just about what you can get. That is that is what the Gentiles do. Now, please, I'm not saying be lazy. I'm still saying, ladies and gentlemen, you are first of all a child of God before you are a doctor, before you are an engineer, before you are a nurse. You are first of all a child of God. That is not a profession. That is a family. And the head of that family is our God in heaven. And it's the responsibility of the heavenly father. What do you call father? Father means provision. Pay school fees. I mean, we can't call you Diane for nothing. Diane means our husband. Our husband, you can't give money for soup. Our husband, you can't buy clothes for your wife. They should change your name to Stella. <laughs> but people of God, covenant. Already, if you are saved, you already have open heavens. Why the heaven get closed sometimes? It's because we remove our eyes. Acts chapter number 7 verse 55, 56 the Bible says when they were stoning Stephen and suddenly looked up and the heavens was open and Jesus was standing I told you what happens when God stands his enemies are scattered it's in scripture arise O Lord let your enemies be scattered anytime God is standing he has nowhere to find him no he, he cannot he cannot stand within that vicinity. And in this vision, open heavens means God is always standing. In the place of communion between you and your father, strangers are not welcome. But why we have strangers, demons, evil spirits, a lot of times is because we don't. Sometimes the communion is very selfish. It's not to ask the father, Lord, how are you doing? Lord, my school fees, Lord, blah, 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 blah. To even say thank you for the last one he paid. Guala. Communion means iron sharpening. I talk, he talk. Okay? That's communion. If it is just a one-way discussion, nay, that's what you call radio. 
radio communication. But when we have discussion, I can hear you, I can ask you questions. Lord, why, 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 why did you have to allow Jesus to be beaten that bad? In the place of communion, God stands. Because not everybody comes for communion. Everybody comes for their needs. When your needs are in the way, there will always be close heaven somewhere. Because you are not here based on covenant. You are not here for communion. I show you a more excellent way. The Lord judge me by life. But then God will give you things you don't pray for. If I'm in prayer for seven hours, I am in discussion for five and a half. Say, Lord, what, 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 what do you want me to do? A lot of us think God doesn't have burden. He says, take my yoke. For my yoke is easy and my body is like, God has body and he has yoke. And he's looking for someone to share it with. Because he doesn't have jurisdiction over here. He needs you, who is representing him, an ambassador, to do some things for him. Very few people come to say, Lord, what will we do? God is saying, that my son is straying away. I need you to pray for him. Because he cannot pray for him. He cannot. His, his own job is to answer. So he cannot be doing the talking and the asking. No, that's not how he put it. It's the dawn of a new day, people. We should, we should start having services where we just come. Pray nothing. Do nothing. And just worship God. Just not for what he has done just because of the privilege they are giving us to have a relationship with him. A songwriter says, because of who you are, I give you glory. The tyranny of our needs is the one causing close heavens. What we will eat, what we will drink. And yet, he says, you keep gathering, yet your bands are not full. Doesn't that tell you that you are, you are struggling? Oh, you think because you have a million dollars, you are rich? That's chicken change. I'm not joking. That is not money. And for people that God genuinely blesses, you even know they have a penny. Because their identity is not in what they have. Their identity is in the who they have in their life. People, this thing is more than this, I'm telling you. It's more than you be blessed. It's more than you. God actually goes out of his way to make sure he handles the affairs of those who care about him. Because it's not everyone that God loves that loves him. It's not, no, it's not everyone. Jesus says, if you love me, keep. That's how I know you love me. Do the things I say. So don't go and do your stuff and come. I will still answer. God is kind to everybody. His love for you is unconditional. Huh? But his trust for you is conditional. His love for you is but it's trust for you. It's not every one of us God trusts. God cannot trust some of us with money. Serious money. We will climb, we will tell people to lay on the floor. We will walk on them so that we can pass by. Because as that now, even the little you have, nobody can correct you. Nobody can correct you. You come to church as though you are doing God a favor. So he can't trust you with some things because he, the Bible says if you are faithful in little, he will make you Lord. 
So a lot of us are not yet qualified for the much we're asking for. The, the plain let has just summarized my sermon. For he that honored me. God's honor is conditional, his love is not. And when God honors you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I am I am not blabbing. Is it, I, I wish my wife was here to tell you some things. It's the life we live since I had this understanding some years ago, over over almost two decades ago. My life changed. You now know what it means to soar on the wings of an eagle. Heaven is already open. The key to open it is not with you, but there's a gate. Stand by the gate, and then you know that heaven is open. Away from that gate, huh? You will see brass. You will see iron. The only place. Once you move from away from there, sir, did you have that vision again? No, you move away from the point of communion. <laughs> Let us pray. Listen, people. Don't miss this conference or convention. Bring your enemies so that they can be at peace with you. You know, if your enemies are saved, I love leading witches to Christ. I, I, I keep leading them to Christ every now and then I go, especially back when I'm, even in, in fact, I've led more witches to Christ in England than in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. Yes, man. Oh, yes, man. Today is England. They have more dead than in the city. 